Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of SaaS Track from Startup Grind Hyderabad. So for those who don't know about SaaS Track, uh, we thought of making a, a complete and in-depth knowledge series on uh, SaaS products and also the SaaS businesses and help our community which consists of a lot of entrepreneurs, professionals, startups and uh, students as well uh, to know about what is SaaS and how things work inside a SaaS firm right from the launch till uh, you know going for the going to acquire for the uh, acquire the first 100 clients and this is our seventh episode in um, a sas track and uh, we already we all always uh, you know put our uh, the episodes on youtube as well uh, to make um, uh, people you know access uh, to, to have access on the complete content that we are putting out there so the link is out there and today uh, anubhav uh, Thank you for uh, accepting thank our request and Aditya, thank sir, thank you so much for accepting our request. And I'm giving it over to you, Anubhav. You can uh, take this forward and uh, sure. yes, let's get started with it. Yes. Right. So good, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Anubhav. I'm um, a co-founder with Book Buy Slot. Uh, just let me briefly introduce Aditya, what Book Buy Slot is. Um, Book Buy Slot is an online SaaS-based platform for micro stays for hotels. So we're trying to uh, disrupt uh, the normal check-in, check-out time, what you usually have, uh, the standard 2 p.m. and 12 p.m. and time sharing of hotels. So what we're trying to do here is um, break the whole 24-hour uh, window into different slots right. and uh, give the flexibility to travelers so that they can make their choice. So right. they, they decide the check-in, check-out time and they decide the window they want to you know, uh, go ahead and stay for. Uh, so I've been bootstrapping for about three years. Um, and... Uh, successfully um, so we've got about 2000 hotels on board uh, all the biggies have come in india uh, covid was like a blessing in disguise somehow uh, and i'd like to carry this uh, session and um, ask you a few questions about uh, what the pandemic has brought up you know um, the challenges and opportunities so what do you think i mean uh, how uh, we can go ahead and say, scale the saas companies in these tough times for the hotel industry what do you think you've been for about 15 years, I was reading about Horologics. Uh, 2008, you started in, and and you've been doing fantastic, right? So, one of the leading PMS um, and channel managers in India, right? So, so, so please share your thoughts about what you think. Sure, I would first like to ask you, what did uh, Revan? How did you bribe Revan? Because uh, he is calling you Anubhav and calling me sir. Definitely, there is something that you've done with him. <laughs> to bribe him uh, and, and and no i didn't I mean. <laughs> and, and and i can see you know that uh, this could be a possibility right you're much senior to us and you've got much expertise and you know greater experience so that's that's pretty much it right uh, okay <laughs> Okay. Much to learn from you, right? No, so, not at all. Calling uh, sir is absolutely. I I absolutely believe in the cause of book my slot. I've been through your right. site, and I think uh, the hotel industry is waiting to get disrupted, to stop thinking uh, the age-old way, and you know start uh, looking at guests as its priority, than looking right. at its accounts the way they have to manage their accounts and stuff like that. Right? So right, it's more an inward-facing practice what they carry today uh than you know over so no uh, i mean um, uh, you know uh, we we were the one of the earlier pmss that were born on the cloud right? Correct. Uh, and so it happens that we are now one of the most experienced uh, few pmss that are that have been born on the cloud cloud and hardened on the cloud for uh, you know 10 plus years uh, but uh, the flip side to it is that when we started, the industry was not ready for it. So we were, that was two thousand eight, right? If 2008, I'm not wrong. Right. 
and 2009 we had our alpha version out and industry was clearly not ready for it uh, the uh, and the funny part was that uh, we were not making it for the uh, india market right and none of us were hoteliers right uh, we had basically seen an opportunity that uh, you know these the mid market and the smb uh, the small sized hotels they absolutely right. low, uh, need a good end to end uh, solution to manage their operations and also connect to the online world which was becoming popular at that point in time right and now it is very popular already so it was becoming right. critical to address to the online demand so so that was the genesis why we started but the place from where we started was not known for products at all 2008 india right the market that we were targeting was not india so we were targeting for a market where we were not sitting right and uh, and we were uh, non hotelier so everything that could uh, be you know against us was against us right so same is with me i'm not a hotelier yes but i am into travel and hospitality yeah so so i am saying that you uh, when you uh, when you start a company which is into core hotel operations right right and then so you you basically say that it's a erp for a vertical and okay. the, the the market is not next to you you are not from the industry and you are from a country which is not known for products right so all these Correct. are uh, you know dynamics that you start as from a back foot right when you start a venture like this absolutely i've been i i i've been somehow working on something very similar mm -hmm. so not exactly like a pms but i'm working on a uh, started working on a model which is called a single api okay uh, it's very popular in the europe okay um, there's a company called impala yeah, um, yeah i know that yeah yeah so i am so what i am trying to do is i'm trying to disrupt with the end to end solution uh, give hotel they use api with amenities real time real time means that you exactly know how many people in the pool mm -hmm. you exactly know how many people in the restaurant and i'm hooking that with the, with a bus api and i'm doing a uber Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm amalgamating all and bringing um, uh, an umbrella mm -hmm. on top of uh, as one API, and uh, that will be custom code plug and play. You can you can use that as like Stripe for payments, right? So you integrate sure. within minutes and you're off. Sure. So that is something which my vision is. I mean, it's it's, it's a long path. It's it's just a start. So we're trying to figure out what we can do, how we can do. Right now, we're scaling the hotel model, uh, the mm -hmm. slot model, and adding different. We'll add different verticals to um, the time sharing. Uh, could be co-work, co-live, and and make it a marketplace around that. Great, great, great. Um, so I also wanted to ask you now. I mean, since you've been a veteran hotelier um, and into the industry for about uh, so you know more than a decade, uh, what are the opportunities area, opportunity areas you think uh, pandemic has created for our hospitality and travel industry right now? So uh, see, basically one. thing good about hotel logics is that it is pretty much global in nature right which means right. that we have customers that are uh, you know from uh, in almost 100 odd countries who use our solution right. and that gives us the ability to at least prioritize markets that are opening first number one right so we can right. sequence it like that and i'm glad to say that you know india is one of them you know, and Yeah. it is definitely opening up for sure yeah. um, and it's well not up. the same scenario which was 10 12 years back right second the good the you know look at the way industry you know uh, uh, comes back to you uh, hospitality by name, you know it is it is known to be one of the laggards in technology adoption otherwise right i think from the bottom it is the third in terms of yeah. uh, technology adoption but you know uh, the news is that the, that uh, the covid has happened and the good news is that it has expedited technology adoption in hospitality yeah because you bound to expedite right if you yeah. don't you kill you will you kill you finish right you yeah. have to and 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 hospitality is known like a touch and feel kind of an industry right at least in south asia and southeast asia markets right in india we would never imagine to have a hotel which is completely contactless in nature right you know where is the uh, you know human touch gone and where is the hospitality they would say right, right. but 
Right. Now, times have changed, and contactless technology has become very, very critical. Right. So, so those are. Uh, so, this is a time when, uh, from our perspective, we are seeing that contactless is becoming very critical. So that right. hotels need at the moment. Number two, we are also giving them the ability, uh, tools that will help them open, uh, you know, and ease out their their whole uh, initial period of opening up the hotel. So by giving them tools that can generate more direct bookings, thereby reducing the cost of, uh, you know, uh, of a booking from a uh, commission list, and uh, giving them tools that will help them give contactless experience to the uh, uh, guest, and also on that same digital concierge there, which is uh, as part of the contactless solution. They are able to do some kind of an upselling and stuff like that. So help them increase their revenue and open safely, right? Is exactly. what uh, the our in a, our areas where we are seeing that hotels are, uh, you know, uh, are, are really gravitating towards. Thank you so much. Uh, I would also like to you know reiterate and ask: uh, Do you think like? Um, this is related more towards my model of book by slot. Do you think time sharing of hotels to save money will work for hotels? And it's a good idea, especially post COVID, where uh, people are crunched for money and hotels are crunched for revenue, hotels are crunched on ARR. Uh, no, no, so let's see. Let's, let's look at why hotels don't do it. Right. There's a clear cut. So if, if you told a hotel that right. you know, uh, yeah, one room night you are earning. 5,000 versus 20,000, what would you prefer? What would be the answer? Obviously right? 20,000, right? Right. And if they optimize their, if they utilize their inventory optimally, they can do that. And one of the yes. key, uh, way for them to uh, optimize it by use, by adopting book my slot kind of a model. Model, right? So our, whole, our, our whole scenario or our whole process or vision was to Get the hotels occupied to 90 95 percent, right? Which it was currently 65 percent when we started, 65.6 to be precise. Yes, according to me, it can go more than 100 percent, right? So, so, so what I mean to say is that, but there are there are bottlenecks that are operational bottlenecks to adopt, Correct. right? And you would know that better than me, right? And now, those bottlenecks have superseded the whole opportunity. And hence, so many years, it has not happened, right? But, right. but uh, what, what do you think? Is it the right time right now? It is the right time because I think everyone will have to rethink, right? You uh, and uh, everyone will have to reimagine how to run their businesses more, most optimally, right? So, uh, so, I, I, so, so for business hotels, no doubt what you are doing is uh, should, should be adopted. Uh, post COVID, in the new normal, I don't see how it will not be adopted. Yeah, so that's what I I, I, I sense, right? So all these hotels were, which were reluctant to come on board, like the Hyatts, the Radisons before, because obviously we were relatively new and a uh, little bit of name in the market, not a big player, right? So, but now they're adapting. They are they are they are upfront uh, calling us and then saying, um, help us and increase their revenue. As like you know, that's like a blessing in disguise for us. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, we would love, love to work with them and 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 help yeah, them as much as we can. What that you face is that you have to survive and survive well till post COVID because till the pandemic year is there, there are a lot of industry bodies that are actually talking about post charge checkout. The in the room has to be left vacant for one day, right? So, uh, yeah. So it's. Slight counter uh, productive for a uh, uh, solution like uh, book my slot, but I think as we settle down with this pandemic, the new normal will certainly adopt something like a book. Absolutely. Slot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me just go ahead and put the next question uh, here. Um, so this is like as you all you've already covered that, but I'll just briefly you know put that across. What contactless solutions do you think SaaS companies should build for the hotel ind hotel industry in these tough times? I mean, you've already mentioned contactless. So, uh, what sort of contactless solutions? Be contactless check-in, contactless dining, or what sort of? 
um, solution. Yeah. So, see, basically, you have to keep the guest in the center whenever you look at a solution for a hotel, right? And right. Uh, and if you if you keep the guest in the center, then you basically say that all the interaction points that you have with the guest needs to be contactlessly built, right? One of them being check in, check out. The others being how you take reviews from them, feedbacks from them. The third being if they have any request, are they picking up the phone and calling, or are, or can they just do it on their mobile using contactless, right? Right. And uh, if you need to upsell anything to them, can you do that? So everything that is guest facing should go contactless. Number one, right? So you basically related to guest experience right from check-in to check out uh, to dining to everything should be contactless and with minimal yes. contact yes contactless or minimal contact that should be there also what what hotel should be doing is that uh, why are they doing it they're doing it so that the guest feels safe right yes so if the guest feels safe but the guest didn't know whether you know this particular uh, 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 cutlery that he has he's using has it been sterilized or not you'll be second Correct. guessing that right whether this particular lobby that i am sitting in has been sanitized or not so that's that that'll be like a part and parcel of the duty of the hotel so right? the duty of the hotel but also proactive communication to the guest right what i'm saying is correct that that's been yeah. done here are my 10 uh, you know there, there are 50 employees uh, housekeeper, this, that, we are checking their temperature daily and this is their temperatures, right? Be, be, communicate, proactive communication to the guest, even at the cost of over communication is important in today's day and age. Right. I'll, I'll quickly move on to the next part. Um, so I uh, wanted to ask you about something about SaaS models, uh, hotels and companies for hospitality should adapt in these times. We talk a lot about how do you, you know, go ahead and scale uh, SaaS companies, be it uh, uh, purely, purely app-based companies in terms of hospitality and hand, hand hotels. So what do you think? Uh, what, sort, what sort of SaaS models uh, the hotels and companies like us, like, you know, um, uh, book by slot, or be it any other company, right? Who's into uh, software as a service model can scale uh, for them to go ahead and increase their sales and revenues. So what other SaaS models they could adopt apart from what currently are there in the market? So, see, the number one, the answer lies in two parts. Number one, whether it is, it is vertical SaaS or horizontal SaaS, right? Because the way to respond to uh, horizontal SaaS versus vertical SaaS are two very different things. So when you go vertical, you have to understand your domain so deep. You know, I need to know even what, what, what the attire of the housekeeper Whereas if I send a CRM solution across all verticals, I don't need to know that, right? So, so breaking this answer into two parts, right? That number one, vertical very, very in-depth understanding about the vertical is needed for you to be able to respond to the dynamics of the vertical, if you are in vertical sets, right? But And similarly, what about the horizontal? In, in the horizontal, I think that uh, which applies to vertical as well, right? Is that what is the ROI based model that you can present to the customer? That so we all talk about pay as you go, but we all know that it is not pay as you get paid, right? Correct. Or pay as you uh, as you save, or pay as you uh, you know. So it's not uh, return on investment based. The more you can link it to ROI-based model, your pricing models, it will help you not only keep your to the ground to, of what means value to your customer, but also put up a pricing model that will emulate that. I think that is one blanket advice that can be given to any SaaS company. And and, and especially in India, right? So, I mean, you're fully aware, you've been doing here uh, business for a long, long time. That this is a price sensitive and a price dominating market. Right? Yes. So price is the first thing that customer comes to anybody who is a consumer. But the good news is that it was never a ROI driven market, and it will turn it, and the opportunity is to turn it into an ROI driven market. 
Correct. So, I mean, that that's what, right? A lot of SaaS companies doing deep discounting and carrying on, carrying on, on investors' money. And 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 ultimately, I mean, the customer is benefiting out of it. But, but where is the return on investment? So, so, uh, so uh, let's see what we have done, right? So, we have done occupancy-based pricing. We say as your, as your, so uh, basis your occupancy is the is your usage of your of your PMS and uh, per occupied room night, let's say you pay us forty cents, and as your occupancy increases, we will increase our revenue, right? So now it is getting down to the, uh, you know, to the minutest unit of what makes. Uh, you, means value to them or how do they earn back revenue for their businesses so yeah. what is what is uh, about this particular model uh, which i've been thinking for a long time and 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 the, uh, i've been speaking to a lot of companies in the us and and, and europe uh, work from hotel model what do you think about this because i'm personally yeah. venturing yeah. into so, it so citizen m i think has been uh, one of the pioneers uh, yeah, in coming up with this model, and uh, they have been able to crack it. In fact, uh, one of our customers is Royal Orchid. I did share that model with uh, Mr. Balji to see, you know, if it has merit and can our hotels over here adopt it, right? I consider him as a very thorough hotelier who understands uh, pricing and stuff like that. So, so it is a very, very profitable. Uh, uh, it looks like Citizen M is doing very well, number one, right, with that model. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and so, in terms, in terms of, in terms of uh, online aggregators, yeah. right? So, I was speaking to Yanis. Uh, Yanis yeah. is one of the co-founders at Hotels by the Day yeah. in New okay. York. Uh, so they they adapted this post COVID, mm -hmm. and and they're saying we're getting a lot of volume in terms of uh, work from hotels because a lot of people are. Um, Getting into safe places, working from hotels. I mean, again, that's that's New York versus we're talking about in India. I mean, I personally started work from hotel pilot with Lemon Tree, okay. uh, so about ninety odd hotels. I mean, we're getting a lot of queries, a lot of conversions not happening because uh, most of the hotels are closed and some of them are not live. But it's an initial phase, right? But we we're trying to get around more around the rates and how we can do more dynamic pricing. Yeah, yeah. So so that. so see, basically anything that can give you a longer length of stay, right? We say that the success is one of the success metrics is what is your average length of stay, right? And you can come out with a base model so that you can earn more revenues in all the add-ons that you sell during that period, right? That could that that, that is a no-brainer, right? So it, it has to work if your base model, uh, you know. And do you, do you think it's going to work with with or without the room? Sorry, no, 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 no. Difficult in this yeah, time. In this time, difficult. All right. Thank yeah. you. Uh, so, jumping on to the next one, right? So, uh, what do you think? Uh, what is the future of uh, channel management and software, and how will PMS play its role efficiently? I mean, you in the PMS business and channel manager business, channel management. So, uh, see, depending on the type of hotel, right? Let's say it's small, uh, I will say in US they call it as a mom and pop hotel. Mom and pop hotels, like OYO has got yeah, US, yeah. right? So they call it mom and pop. So hotels. these small uh, uh, hotels, 10, 15 room, 20 room inventory, right? Who are uh, versus hotels, like, let's say 50 plus room inventory, right? That are more professionally run. I'm not saying that. 15, 20 room in, uh, hotels are not uh, are not nicely run. They are passionately run by by hotel owners with the passion. But here there is at a 50, 50 plus, there is a more professional approach, uh, more corporate-ish approach towards running a hospitality business. Right? What I think uh, is they are more technology driven. No, 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 right. uh, I'm just saying that that the whole technology buying buying cycle and uh, is different in both these hotels. So when it comes to a small 15 room property, right. their first technology is when they get exposed to the demand generators, right? So they will start creating accounts in uh, make my trips and booking.coms of the world. Then the next right. piece of technology is channel manager, 
then next piece of technology is a pms but when you go to a 50 room property their whole cycle is different they have their accounts on the but their first technology would be pms and then channel manager so they go bottom up these guys go come uh, top down right top yeah. down so 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 basically um, uh, you know i think that uh, in times to come uh, pmss or pms pms lets you know smaller pmss will actually become uh, almost mandatory for every small hotel business also to use up till now it was an option for them whether to adopt technology to the last mile or not but i don't think that will be left in times to come so you are saying that all the small hotels and, and 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 hotels for example right now in new delhi right opposite the railway station like pahad ganj hotel so they they do not have any technology driven there is, so they yeah. are all I don't think a hotel that will survive in the new normal which does not utilize inventory let's look at the life of a demand generator right let's say i make my trip today right if they do not have pms at the pahad ganj hotel which is connected with make my trip also and which is connected to uh, booking.com also the make my trip guy is selling a, a product for, to which he has no control whether it can be serviced or not right yeah so if there is no connection point. blocking of that inventory has not happened so you yeah. are actually selling a product over which you have no control whether it will be delivered or not can you ex- can you expect such an experience on amazon you can't you can at scale you can't right yeah. so i mean at the, at the kind of scale make my trip is on you can't do that right yeah and, and i'm saying it never almost never happens on an amazon right so, exactly so make my trip is no less than a consumer tech business right so it needs to have that kind of a uh, you know control over the inventory that it sells and that can only happen if small hotels adopt technology for operations that are and so you think it's going to be mandatory for them right now right yeah. now uh, they were not they should that. come you will see review scores include the reliability factor of the hotel thank you uh, so jumping on to the next point uh, which i currently have so what do you think how travel will shape up post covid and how saas companies can penetrate this opportunity see how travel will shape up post covid is anyone's guess today i don't think even i can guess that or anyone else can guess that right? no, but, but, but what i can certainly say is that today the the travel will become end to end technology driven right number one what millennials expect today will be the non tomorrow right today they uh, so so end to end adoption means till the last mile from where from pre booking to post check out the whole travel experience will be end to end technologically plugged thank you yavin that's that's what my thought yeah. is right so with the single api what i'm talking yeah. about so not a traveler does not only need a hotel so to reach the hotel he needs a cab everything and right he needs to in the hotel right he needs a bus or whatever right? completely So, so amalgamating that and combining it into one API and selling it yes. to travel companies, yes. could be OTA, could be hotels. Yes. So that was my thought, right? So it it is not only a hotel or a day use room which the which a traveler needs. He needs end to end, as you Absolutely. said, right? Absolutely. And I think that the inventory will reduce. It you'll have a shrunk inventory at the end of uh, you know uh, uh, when we have a new normal, but the market size for a technology provider will still increase because the te- technology adoption will increase drastically right from smaller hotels yeah. i mean obviously a uh, yeah, premium yeah, price yeah, price addressable price. market will still increase for a technology provider thank you uh, coming to the next point um, we already discussed that but just re- reiterating it you started hotel logics in 2008 and uh, what are your key learnings and advice for early stage entrepreneurs including myself oh <clears throat> well i think what uh, the the key learning is that if you think i mean that is for any other business not saas or anything
but if you think that you are generating value and someone is ready to pay for it and there are people that and that, that has some scale into it it's a scalable problem number one you have to go for it right you cannot you uh, you know you you cannot sit along the coastline and see you know can i should i do should i not do it and stuff like that number one number two that you have to understand that whenever you start a new business you'll have to sweat for it there is a reason why we call it as sweat equity right you'll have to sweat for right. it right and uh, and every business will have their own bootstrapping or you know initial period of uh, so let's say a a a, a peripheral uh, solution which is horizontal in nature will probably have a lesser initial period of adoption or you know uh, scaling up that it requires than a vertically tied b2b you know erp like ours so it has a long gestation period uh, so you have to understand the kind of product and the industry that you have gone into and what is the kind of gestation period it 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 can possibly have and so that you don't lose patience before that you know the worst news is that the, the success is around the corner but you've lost patience right so yeah it happens right i mean a lot of people tell me right it's not happening what you doing yeah. right but then i i get a lot of feedback from investors and when we were approaching investors to raise um, our round uh, is that you know you probably too early for the indian market right so, so so people still don't know how this works like they use time sharing not necessarily to hotels but it could be anything like in china everything is time yeah for your kind of business Virtually. i have some advice please so i think your kind of business cannot go geographically it has to go city wise your type of businesses are built for for cities that have high business travel right and Correct. so i don't think you should be loculating yourself into india or us or indonesia you should be saying these are the five cities that i choose that is what exactly yeah. we do so we 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 focus on eight metros of india no i am saying that Delhi, geographically you'll have to test it out in different geographies because the eight metros of india we still going through similar mindsets right when you are doing something slightly more you know uh, foundationally different to what hotels are used to i would advise that Correct. you should try it in at least three different countries okay that that that's that's a new advice right and and yeah i mean people abroad have given me this advice that do like do it uh, scale it parallelly right so open it for the world so not exactly it should be at least three markets you should not be a victim to a market not responding whereas your your value proposition was uh, still good for some yeah, other market right so for example right now when i was in dubai i was when i launched this i was in dubai right so we uh, so they said that investors had a clue right so why you live, left dubai and started in india i said it was easy because it was a home, my home market here it's difficult but they said this is the best market it's a business airport in the world exactly so exactly. so we thinking of parallel market secondary yeah. market yeah. Those city wise, absolutely, absolutely city wise is what i feel thank you yeah. thank you uh, coming to the next uh, point uh, how can saas companies penetrate 10x growth using covid as an opportunity in hospitality industry right now what are your thoughts about it so <clears throat> again uh, if you are talking hospitality or any vertical you are you have right. to have very very deep understanding about the particular market and the vertical itself right so today if i know the way us is thinking about its reopening and stuff like that then i can shape myself accordingly whereas philippines has already declared that there won't be any domestic travel uh, philippines collection of many islands right so uh, there won't be flights between islands and also even domestic travel has gone indonesia has declared that there is no international travel till december so number one i need to know which market to choose right yes. and within that what are their norms so if i have to go to go deep into us i would say it is not just about giving them more bookings it is not just about going contactless but it is also positioning yourself correctly that you have the right tools 
so that you are uh, you you give them the tools that save them for from litigation right so uh, a, a us person is very free to you know you know uh, at the drop of the hat they can uh, sue anyone right and uh, uh, so uh, yeah so that's how the law yeah, yeah. is there the right? fear of law uh, which is a real fear are you giving them tools that they can that can be used to say so we say okay why don't you disclose all that you do in the hotel for sanitation to the guest voluntarily and so that tomorrow he will not be able to come and question you that you did not do that and hence you save on any possible litigation right so what i'm trying to say is that you have to go very deep into the market dynamics and the vertical at hand to be able to say what can penetrate deep over here so so you are saying that it depends market to market right? absolutely Obviously, like in the us it will be different in india it's different in europe absolutely it's different. absolutely absolutely in us today you can sell by saying even earlier but now it has become that much more important that you are saving man hours right and now they are extremely resource crunch much more than ever before and they are going to value it by you know much more than what uh, it will get valued in india or thailand right because you, because human capital is right. cheap right. countries like india and and thailand yes. and hence forth so um, obviously you, so less the contact more uh, less um, human power is required right yes. more or, the automation right yeah correct. so so correct. so absolutely it is geographically dri driven and uh, uh, you have to get to that pre booking to post checkout where all are you adding value to them and hence you will be able to chalk out how can you penetrate deep so if we if we talk about india um, what do you think what kind of saas models like specifically I uh, since i mean for hospitality you know, or India, uh, that india is a the very uh, you know it is a market which has 85 80 85% of domestic travel right now states okay. have reopened they have they have uh, you know states have opened up boundaries for other states and all so i think everything that can number one make the guest safe that is a given you have to use you have to go with that value proposition to them second is how are you enabling them to get business from around right what is the content that you are trying to play with right for a hotel so for a hotel it has become very important that today mm -hmm. if you are selling a hotel in uh, uh, chikbangalore right or right. if you are selling a hotel in kur what are the markets that you should be targeting it should be bangalore mysore right, right. kind of markets so drivable distance markets and if you're targeting those markets then you have to do everything around those markets for the next 6 to months to a year international market is not opening up so better focus your yeah that is exactly what airbnb is doing right so they are focusing more on local travel right. rather than because they know international travel is not going to right. happen countries are jacked up uh, they're not allowing uh, they're not issuing visas people not traveling flights are not there uh, so what they are saying to penetrate travel right and to scale the revenue right. they are saying that uh, within the, we'll promote within the us right. because that's that there they can travel right right, right. so again geography driven uh, like as you said drivable distance focus right uh, end to end solution they should not feel oh we are going over there now what about when you have to go around what is it that we need to do now again we'll be in contact what service providers will we have to go through so i'm saying imagine a traveler that is coming from your nearby metro right, right. and have your complete focus on that whether it is in your cuisine whether it is in your uh, 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 positioning of uh, your services everything has to be driven on that great thank you so much and now i'm coming to the last part of the question uh, what is the future of time sharing services like book by slot and others for example in india uh, in the future um, not like 
immediately after post covid but years to come and this could be as i said time sharing models uh, sharing not only related to hotels but sharing of spaces sharing of uh, services and and making a holistic um, sharing market like like so anything we can yeah. earn with uh, you know learn from how parking slot businesses are right correct so that is also space sharing that's what i'm saying right that they are probably they use the space most efficiently right they uh, so they know exactly which particular slot is not uh, is, is available it will go into that slot there are you know so so they they run their space management quite efficiently i think like like hmm, please, sorry. i i think hospitality industry is waiting to be disrupted on that model there is just too much of inefficiency in the way we utilize resources in a hotel correct so coming back to that i will reiterate one more question uh, you you brought the point that uh, too much resources uh, what about the legacy um, um, hotel management systems what they currently have in the hotels right. they have to uh, like the pms you have to reimagine i am all we are already looking at coming out with a new system and we say that you know that uh, uh, especially hotel management systems are very very boring in nature right uh, if i have to but if you look at consumer tech uh, an amazon app or a denzo or you know uh, an uber there's an interesting app because they are very intelligent they drive efficiency Correct. from a user but i think enterprise applications have not adopted that so number one enterprise pmss need to become lot more intelligent right than what they are today so for example what what happens at a five star hotel so for example if i'm using an oracle opera uh, the booking comes and and then um, any five star hotel downloads the booking and save it there correct that's what happens right so how to automate no, no, that is simple to automate you know that is very simple to automate you are connecting your channel manager to your pms and the booking lines up in your pms already we, we all do that today even operators that in many ways right but what i'm trying to say is that you have a front desk guy sitting right and that right. front desk guy has five things that he is responsible for one is checking in the guest checking out the guest take care taking care of his uh, few requirements but also of selling and providing certain reports to the front desk manager right now for the five actions that he does the system already knows why can't it instrument the same thing automated way to say okay these are the five things that you do and render it on his whatsapp directly you know this is your these are the people that you need to check in say yes to check in and whatever you know, the way you want to render it right this is the, the this is the person who's coming in these are the thing that you can upsell to him right so i'm saying that everything needs to be reimagined now because technology if you want to increase te- technology adoption there is a time where you are the industry has given you a slight break from you know uh, 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 because it is in a slightly depressed state so you could you could reimagine products and render it back to the industry and deliver it back to the industry to utilize to make them more efficient as the professionals great great and 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 as for as far as hotel logics concerned i mean one one question so um i was speaking to somebody in hotel logics before they had approached me for the pms integration right uh, i was speaking to oracle as well that for time how different um, are are both the companies and how how you go ahead and you know having an, having an edge over them and and signing up the hotels and getting more business that's more like a personal question just come i i miss the question what are you saying so so uh, so oracle captures the major uh, ma- market of uh, pms yeah. in india right so how different your product you can you can uh, you know define post covid or it was there before that you can you can gain edge as a competitor um, absolutely see number one uh, oracle uh, addresses mostly the five star market uh, segment we don't that's correct right uh, we four star and above four star and above like all chain model no not just chain they are basically 
more in the five star segment or very big global chains right so correct, correct. so as a pms that is not our target market right so we don't compete with them but why but our customer is lot more demanding in terms of flexibility right let's say a a, a, a mid size hotel business uh, you can say in india let's say elementary or a, a, or a royal orchid or a ferns right their requirements right. are lot more dynamic and they need lot more flexibility right. in terms of your capability to integrate and stuff like that number 1 right so so that is where you uh, you when you make the system highly flexible to adapt to these dynamic requirements that's where you score an edge over, over uh, the likes of oracle right uh, so it's not specific uh, so it's not basically category specific right so you so you make it more flexible anybody can go ahead and use yeah it. Seg- yeah and also you know see if i have to get into a particular group right which is like a 40 50 property group and it is it is basically uh, you know growing rapidly i can't go and think that i will change the whole ship i will sit in the center and i'll have to integrate and adapt to the ecosystem that it works with right Correct. our ability to integrate is far higher and we are highly api driven kind of a solution for us uh, you know so 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 uh these kind of businesses find us more suitable than trying to go for an opera thank you so much um and it was that's that's all the questions what i currently have and it it was wonderful getting your insights on this and definitely i'll, I'll take this offline and have an opportunity to connect with you sure okay thanks thanks bye hello kashyap kashyap uh thank you so much for your wonderful insight really a great conversation i wish uh, I, i wish you go, you guys could talk an extra one hour so i can uh, even our community can grab a lot of knowledge from you uh thank you so much anubhav and aditya thank you so much for sharing your uh, insights um uh if if attendees have any questions you guys can uh, drop for a, we'll just take it for a couple of minutes and then we can uh, start our networking session Sure. Uh, if there's any questions for Aditya, or um, please please feel free to ask. I've already asked a lot of questions from him. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, pertaining to the models, what we have, and obviously a general insight on mm-hmm. on SaaS. How do you scale SaaS, right. and uh, the industry? What the industry is going through right now. Mm-hmm. So, any particular questions? If um, uh, attendees who are there currently want to ask, feel free to. Uh, yeah um, jump in and ask the question please thank you yes and also we'll be uh, posting this uh, video across and uh, you guys can even post your questions on our linkedin or our on uh, our, our community channels as well so we could uh, take that up with anubhav and aditya later so thank you so much uh, aditya thank you so much for joining and uh, anubhav you too and uh, i hope uh, we'll uh, we'll talk again